We live in a somewhat unfortunate time in history because most ecosystems don't have any very large animals anymore. This is because most of them died out at the end of the last glacial period and there hasn't been enough time for them to evolve again. However, the one continent that is still almost the same as it was during the Ice Age is Africa, and the largest of the big animals found here are the elephants. And as most large animals took a sharp decline at the end of the last glacial period, so do the elephants and their similar looking relatives. The fact that this order has so few living representatives explains why elephants look so unlike most other animals alive today, but there were many weird and even larger beasts that lived up to the not so distant past. Rodents, primates, whales, hoofed animals, and basically nearly all mammals belong to a group called Borotheria. This group probably diverged from each other just after or just before the dinosaurs died out at the beginning of the Cenozoic, around 65 million years ago. Elephants, however, do not belong in this group and actually belong to a small group of other mammals called Atlantogenata that are not closely related to all the other mammals mentioned at all. And the most accepted theory based on their DNA is that Atlantogenata split from Borotheria over 100 million years ago during the mid-Cretaceous. Alongside elephants, Atlantogenata contains aardvarks, elephant shrews, sloths, and armadillos that are animals that have a very different geographical distribution. This is because they would split again into the Xenatha group and the Afrotheria group. This split most likely occurred tens of millions of years before the dinosaurs died out during the isolation caused because of the divide between South America and Africa. During the Cretaceous, South America and Africa made up one large continent on their own briefly after the breakup of Gondwana, the southern supercontinent. When this continent started to split up, the Xenathans went with South America, and the Afrotheria went with Africa. For the first half of the Cenozoic, the ancestors of elephants only really lived in North Africa near the Tethys Ocean, which is an old seaway that used to exist between Europe and Africa. And when the elephant ancestors lived on the coast, some of their close relatives evolved to swim in the ocean. Some of the closest extant relatives of elephants are Cynerians, the aquatic mammals that include manatees. These animals are sometimes grouped together under the name Tethotheria, named after their close proximity to this old ocean. One of the most basal members of this group was called Phosphotherium that lived 55 million years ago. It is now difficult to see elephants as anything other than massive, but they had very humble beginnings as this animal was only 30 centimeters at the shoulder and probably weighed as little as 20 kilos. Elephants and their ancestors are called proboscideans, grouped by their most famous feature, their trunk or proboscis. However, despite this, Phosphotherium did not have one yet, but would go on to adapt one. One of the first proboscideans to develop a trunk, even if only small, was probably Morotherium. Morotherium lived 37 million years ago during the Eocene, and was semi-aquatic, perhaps living in the water to eat aquatic vegetation. It demonstrates convergent evolution with tapirs and may have used their proboscis for a similar purpose, for grasping vegetation. The primitive members of Proboscidea started out like this, as small and sometimes semi-aquatic animals that didn't really look anything like elephants. The first large Proboscidean that appeared in the fossil record was Baritherium, that weighed two tons and wasn't an ancestor of elephants but a distant relative. During the Oligocene, around 30 to 25 million years ago, the ancient Tethys Ocean was closing as the African and European plates collided into each other, forming the Alps and joining the two continents. Throughout the Oligocene, there were also drastic changes in the ecosystems around the world, moving away from the tropical forests of the Eocene to more modern habitats. Cooler and drier temperatures saw an expansion of a new habitat, grasslands, and these developed all around the world, which probably aided in the evolution of proboscideans. With the continents joined now, there would be a new exchange of animals. A new group of very elephant-like animals called Dinotheridae were some of the first proboscideans to leave Africa, spreading into European and Asian grasslands. It is thought that Dinotheridae evolved from a close relation of Baritherium due to similarities in their teeth. And despite their appearance and very large size, they were not closely related to elephants. In fact, their similar appearance may just be convergence, and elephants may have evolved their similar traits on a different lineage. The ancestor of elephants that lived around this time was probably Paleomastodon, and as you can see, they possess all the features that elephants have, only more primitive, and they were quite small, about the size of a large cow. This creature is grouped in the Elephantiforms, which contains elephants and their close relatives. These close relatives would include the few very elephant-like animals that diverged from the lineage before becoming true elephants, called Elephantomorpha. Elephantomorpha included animals like mastodons that looked very similar to elephants but shared a common ancestor tens of millions of years ago. They would live alongside elephants for a very long time and only died out very recently. 
Another creature that diverged from the lineage before becoming true elephants were a very odd group of creatures called Gompathirs that were very successful throughout the Americas until very recently also. During the late Miocene, between 10 to 7 million years ago, is when the first elephants start to appear. The oldest tracks of an elephant herd belong to a primitive elephant called Stegotetrabelodon that is one of the oldest elephants known. Unusually, it had four tusks, two coming from its chin like a Dinotherium, and two similar to normal elephant tusks. The elephants we are familiar with started to appear around 5 million years ago and evolved in Africa. This would include Asian elephants and mammoths. African elephants just stayed in Africa. And in fact, Asian elephants are not very closely related to their African family members and are actually more closely related to mammoths than they are to African elephants. The global temperatures were rapidly dropping during this time as the Earth was starting to enter an ice age, which had some very large impacts on the planet. The already large grasslands becoming even larger with the drier temperatures, but also sea levels dropped because water was being locked up in glaciers. The drop in sea levels allowed for land bridges to different continents to open up. The UK was connected to Europe, and North America was connected to Asia over the Bering Strait. This meant that a mass of grassland stretched from Ireland all the way to Newfoundland, where it very rarely snowed because of all the water that was frozen in the glaciers. This new habitat was called the Mammoth Steppe, and was perfect for mammoths and also mastodons that lived throughout this environment as well. When the sea levels went to current levels, the last population of mammoths was isolated to Wrangell Island, where they shrunk down to the size of a cow, adapting to less resources, and only died out 4,000 years ago. Elephants have many examples of being the victim of island dwarfism all around the world. One dwarf species of elephant, called Mammothus creticus, have bones that are found on various Mediterranean islands. It is thought that their skulls fueled the cyclops myths, as their nostrils could have been mistaken for an eye, and their small tusks for large teeth. The Dinotheridae died out over one million years ago. Mammoths, mastodons, and gompathirs were thought to be driven to extinction around as little as 10,000 years ago due to climate change and overhunting by humans. It was only closer to the equator where the climate was a bit more stable that the small amount of elephant species were able to survive to this day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be updated of future content from me, then consider subscribing.